The final two matches in South American World Cup qualifiers are upon us with Brazil and Argentina already through. The hunt for the remaining spots could not be tighter. Well, today's a very special episode because we are talking about Peru, my country, who is currently in fifth place and after making it to the World Cup in 2018 for the first time in 36 years, has a chance once again to make history with Ricardo Gareca and his technical team. Well, his assistant and a personal hero of mine, El Grande, Norberto Solano, is my guest today. And as a player, he made 95 appearances for Peru, 20 goals, and was a key member of La Blanqui Roja in the 90s. When he played for Boca Juniors, Diego Maradona called him El Maestrito and was also the first Peruvian to play in the Premier League when he moved to Newcastle United. That's when a young Peruvian teenager, the host of this show, was inspired by seeing one of his own in the biggest league of them all. Solano is here to discuss Peru, Ricardo Gareca, Newcastle, and much, much more. A special que golazo with Novi Solano begins right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Que Golazo. Thank you so much for being part of the show. And FYI, Norberto Solano is in the house. This is a bilingual episode. We will begin in English with translations. Take a break. And Norberto will show us his English skills as well. Primera cosa, Norberto Solano. Un orgullo. ¿Cómo va todo? ¿Cómo estás? Bueno, ante todo, agradecerte por darme este espacio al programa Que Golazo. Eh, es un placer conversar con ustedes, un placer recordar lindas etapas, y bueno, ya de este lado, ya retirado hace 12 años del fútbol, de este lado como, como asistente técnico, ya de entrenador, sin duda sigo disfrutando con la misma pasión que tenía cuando era jugador de fútbol. Gracias por este espacio. No, no Alberto, muchas gracias y mucho más este, después en, en, en este episodio. Vamos a hablar un poquito más acerca de tu carrera, especialmente en Inglaterra, y todo lo que para mí de verdad, un ídolo de verdad, Norberto Solano, muchas gracias. Pero primero tenemos que hablar acerca de la selección. Después de visitar a Uruguay, Perú tendrá la ventaja de jugar la fecha final en Lima ante Paraguay y, y sin opciones de clasificar. Dos partidos que lo determinarán todo. ¿Cómo te sientes, Norberto, acerca de ambas fechas? Mira, sin duda, ya tratando de prepararnos de la mejor manera, eh, yo creo que con Ricardo se viene haciendo un gran trabajo desde más de, ya de siete años. Gracias a Dios las cosas, como lo mencionaste hace un instante, volver a, a la cita más importante del fútbol, que es un mundial, se pudo conseguir. Ahora se trata de, de nuevamente de seguir con la hazaña. Yo creo que estamos sacando obviamente a Brasil y Argentina. Está para cualquiera de, de todos, ¿no? Las elecciones, por ahí Venezuela un poquito más rezagado, pero y por ahí Bolivia, pero después el resto estamos todos todavía con la con la con las mismas chances de poder clasificar y nada, sabemos de que jugar las eliminatorias en Sudamérica es muy duro y nos toca un rival directo que necesitamos sumar ambos como es Uruguay y después obviamente cerramos con Paraguay que yo creo que la última fecha puede puede decidir todo, ¿no? Claro, este hablaste un poquito acerca de Ricardo de Gareca ahí Has trabajado con el argentino desde 2017. Es evidente que ya hicieron historia gracias a lo que pasó en 2018. Esta fase para Qatar, ¿tú crees que ha sido más difícil o más fácil? Mira, nosotros, como siempre lo decimos, es una selección humildemente eh, que siempre todo nos ha costado. Nadie creo que por ahí sacando lo que te decía, Brasil, Argentina, obviamente son grandes selecciones y por ahí ellos tienen estas facilidades de clasificar antes. Después nosotros siempre nos ha tocado la parte más dura, nos ha tocado sufrir, y hasta ahorita, hasta el último, siempre vamos a sufrir. Entonces, yo creo que humildemente este grupo es muy fuerte. Tenemos una selección que ha sabido competir en estos últimos años y seguimos, seguimos con ese espíritu combativo, con grandes selecciones que nos toca enfrentar acá en Sudamérica, y Dios quiera que se vuelva pueda dar la, la oportunidad nuevamente de ir dos veces seguidas a un mundial. Que Dios quiera, Norberto Solano, si no se sufre, no se cumple. Así es la gente peruana. Este, es. Mira, como te dije, todo el Perú se ilusiona con otro mundial, pero pase lo que pase, nos quedamos en agradecimiento en todo lo que han hecho el, el equipo, el cuadro técnico, Ricardo Gareca, tú mismo. ¿Me puedes explicar, Norberto? Porque yo no lo conozco. Es un hombre privado, profesional, pero... 
de todo lo que veo ilusionado con él y todo lo que ha hecho. Pero, ¿cómo ha sido tu experiencia trabajando con Ricardo Agreca? Bueno, sin duda una gran experiencia. Hasta ahora uno no, no, no deja de aprender de las cosas muy buenas que tiene Ricardo. No lo digo por el tiempo que seguimos juntos, pero en general siempre lo, lo, he, lo he apreciado. Yo creo que Ricardo, el, el, lo más importante al margen de su sabiduría desde la parte técnica, yo creo que es un gran ser humano. Y, y él, desde esa inyección al futbolista peruano, nos devolvió nuevamente esas etapas, ese, ese, ese momento de mucho negativismo que me ha tocado a mí también vivirla de jugador cuando he venido a cuatro eliminatorias desde el año 98 hasta la última 2005 que me tocó jugar. Se ha vivido de, una, de un entorno muy duro, de, de mucha crítica, de mucha que no se puede. Y él creo que enchufó, inyectó al pueblo peruano a raíz de obviamente de los grandes rendimientos del equipo, de que las cosas se pueden, pese a que somos criticados de no tener una gran liga, de no tener el universo de jugadores que tenemos como otras selecciones privilegiadas que tienen un universo quizás más grande. Y yo creo que desde esa autoestima al jugador peruano y, y tenemos una suerte que ha conseguido de que por ahí todos nuestros futbolistas cada vez que vienen a la selección juegan bien con nosotros. Y así nos hemos vuelto competitivos desde esa humildad, desde, desde ese, esa gran persona que es él. Y todo el, el entorno que lo rodeamos, yo creo que hemos podido seguir empujando y adiós. somos un equipo. Yo creo que Perú es un equipo donde ninguna pieza nos puede faltar para poder seguir empujando este, este gran desafío de volver al Mundial. Sí, un equipo y una imagen de una familia, de verdad. Es lo que yo veo todo, todos los partidos este, en las eliminatorias, Copa América, etcétera, etcétera. Te pregunto la última antes del, este, de la pausa, pero Norberto, ya que eres una parte fundamental del cuadro técnico, experiencia con el Sub-23, uh, un Mundial, dos fases de eliminatorias, ¿te gustaría dirigir la selección en el futuro? Siempre yo creo que ese es el sueño de todos nosotros, de los que tenemos la oportunidad de ser técnicos y más aún representando a nuestro país. Pero yo creo que eso todavía está muy prematuro, no me adelanto nada, eso será en el futuro. De momento sigo disfrutando y aprendiendo lo que te dije al comienzo, de una gran, un gran profesional. Yo creo que ese es el desafío nuestro de cualquier eh, técnico peruano de algún día dirigir su selección. Eh, eso no sé cuándo va a suceder, no tengo una bolita mágica. Pero nada, yo estoy muy orgulloso de esta oportunidad, gracias a Juan Carlos, a la Federación, de poder trabajar al lado de estos profesionales y seguir profesionalizándome mi carrera. Y bueno, Dios quiera que sea en algún momento, no lo digo ahora, de cara al futuro. Y cuando me toque, poder llevar estos gran desafío como me ha tocado vivir como asistente, ¿no? Ojalá, Norberto, ojalá. Yo tampoco tengo una bolita negra, pero sí tengo pensamientos, deseos y ojalá lo vamos a ver en el futuro. We are going to take a break. Una pausa. When we come back in English, Norberto Solano will talk to us about his career, especially his move to Newcastle United, my Aston Villa as well, and much, much more. Norberto Solano, qué golazo. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Now with Nolberto Solano, a personal hero of mine. Nolberto, as I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, this is a bilingual episode. Now in English, we want to show the world how good your English is also as well. Are you ready, Nolberto? How many English interviews have you been uh, doing recently? I haven't been doing for a long time, but I go family around, so they speak English. So I try to keep my, my little Jordi asking <laughs> to do my best and in English, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to, to be with you. So, um, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to, to kind of speak to your, to your friends, to your people, follow you. No, absolutely. Uh, un placer inmenso. This is in English as well. And by the way, Nolberto, I wanted to say, um, I don't know if my producer can show it in the screen, but you are the background of my Twitter account when you uh, scored that goal ante Tottenham con Aston Villa. I'm an Aston Villa fan. You can see me at Peru and Aston Villa, okay? Those are my two loves, right? And, uh, you know, I moved to England uh, in the 90s from Peru during the Shining Path. My family moved me to England. I felt very alone, very, you know, in that time, Peruvians were not that well known. And then yes. comes Nolberto Solano to the Premier League. It meant so much to me. 
uh, that you came to to England. Obviously, I'm a Villa fan, but you made your real, you know, step with Newcastle. Uh, you know, so I wanted to thank you, first of all, becoming such a cult hero. I, I wanted to know, first of all, how did your move to Newcastle come about? How did it happen? Well, the opportunity came along, you know, when I was playing for Boca Junior, my football agent, he told me about that he was trying to say people probably interested in you in yourself to move to England. And that time, English football wasn't that very, very famous like now, you know, the Premier League. Of course, we, we hear him from a long time ago, like uh, Liverpool was dominating in the 80s, very long time ago with Kenny Douglas, the superstars. But uh, to be honest, I never knew it. I will move to, to England because normally what happened to, to South American players, we normally go into Spain because of language or, or Portugal or Italy. But uh, it was amazing. It never, when, when, I have, when I heard the opportunity, when my agent called me, said, "Listen, is Arsenal or Newcastle my interest in yourself?" I was so exciting. I was start to watching a little bit more the, the Premier League. I know Newcastle quite well a little bit because Tino Spria, like a South American superstar, played for them. So, to be honest, everything happened quick. Saying, you "No, know, you have to leave. Uh, I have to leave Boca Junior. You have to go to England. Newcastle interest in yourself." Kenny Douglas was the manager. I say, oh wow! So it was a, a great day for me. It was a, amazing. It was everything new? I couldn't speak any any English. I couldn't <laughs> say anything. You know, everything was new. I'm very, very, very impressed for England as as a city, as a country. I didn't ever realize how much passion of football. So I was very, very lucky to arrive in one of the well. England is. He created the football, invented the football. So I'm so pleased to, to arrive in, in, the, in the great country and the great passion of football and the great club too. You know, Newcastle, you know, have a very, very good welcome with, with, with a very nice coach at that time. And unfortunately, Kenny Douglas gave me the opportunity and he been, after three months, he has to, he, he, he went, he was sacked of the club. So... A little bit disappointing, but uh, I had to carry on. I got my opportunity to be in England with Ruth Gulley, arrived in the club. So I'm really, really, really pleased to, to arrive. I'm very proud to be one of the first Peruvian playing in the, in the Premier League. And the people still remember myself. So I have a great time in England. Not only Newcastle, Aston Villa, West Ham, Leicester City, Hull City, Harlepool United. So I know all, all the divisions. You do indeed. It was an amazing moment you mentioned arsenal were close as well they were interested interested as well what what a turn that would have been um it must have been because to me nolberto it was a huge culture shock right i didn't know the country uh the food was so different obviously uh that was difficult for me were you prepared for that move did you did you speak zero English, just like my father as well? What, what, what was the strangest thing about moving to England? Because you didn't just move to England, te mudaste to Newcastle. You moved to Newcastle, which is even different with the Geordies, you know, who are great people, but they're, they're not like the Southerns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like I'm saying, where, where are you in the personal? I'll say all the time, I'm very pleased with God to give me the opportunity to move to, I was one of the best league, started to build in the one of the best league. And now is realist. You can see how it's one of the best league in the world. So I was focused and concentrated, yes, and the first thing to play football. I believe the only language in the football, all the, the football language is the same around the world. Mm. It's kick the same ball. You know, um, I was big, big impressed in the pitch, football, the fields, the fields in the training ground, it was like a carpet. So <laughs> we have a five, four, you know, football pitch or fields, like you call. It was amazing to me. Very, very impressed. Nice. So look so, like I said to you before, like a carpet. I was so, so, so excited. <laughs> yeah. So, and after that, when you start to, you know, the people make you feel after three months, four months, people start to know who you are. The football recognize you in the street. 
you make it very, very, very warm, as you say. You know, Newcastle people, even they are in the northeast, very quite, quite to Edinburgh to Scotland, so cool. But the people in general, very cute, very nice. Is uh, very funny. So They're very funny people. And the accent, as you know, yeah, the jewelry, yeah, the jewelry accent is oh my god. <laughs> and uh, but like I'm saying, I always feel very, very welcome. I'm very glad. So please. We started doing well after Bobby Robson arriving in that time to the club in the 2000s. So everything become, you know, became very nice to me. So you start learning the language slowly, taking me a little bit time to do my first interview in English because uh, it wasn't easy. But like I'm said to you, the, the training ground, I remember the people give me a great welcome, like Alan Shearer, Shay Given, God bless him, got his speed. You know, Stevie Harper was the, the voice from the club. So, you hope I'm very pleased with this profession because we we are privileged to have everything. You know, when you arrive in the club, they put you in the hotel. They have a people to pick you up, to take it to training ground, coming back. So after that, it's off to the players, off to the person to get adapted. You know, to adapt into the system. You know, a little bit strange right, driving in the right side in the beginning, but. Uh, <laughs> But right, I believe you, uh, I, like I'm saying all the time, I'm very, very lucky to arrive in England. I love it, the people, everywhere you go play football, the passion is amazing, it's amazing, no? Yeah, absolutely. And then in 2004, you moved to the greatest club the game has ever seen in Aston Villa, but we won't talk about that. I'm just very thankful que Alberto Solano wore the Aston Villa shirt. That, that was some good stuff there as well. But listen, let me ask you something, Alberto. Um, there's a Peruvian at Newcastle right now, Rodrigo Vilca. Um, however, our country is not that well represented uh, in the English game compared to other South Americans or even in Europe. Renato Tapia, Celta Vigo, of course, and some others. Um, what, do, what do you think we need to do to have more Peruvians play in Europe, to see more of our people in Europa, in Inglaterra, in the Premier League, Serie A? What do you think? Well, we need to, like I'm saying, always take it. I was very, very lucky, like I'm saying. Sometimes you need to have it. Uh, now it's getting a little bit tough to move to this kind of Europeans because don't forget, in Europe, you have a great players too. Mm. The competition is getting harder. Yeah. Uh, we probably a little bit unfortunate with the situation with the when you are no in the community, like a, if you know European passport, things like that. It's yeah. getting a little bit tough. But I believe we have to just working hard. We need to just keep going. We need to players need to realize to be in the high level. You always has to to working really really hard to play good football because you have to make different. Andre Carrillo has experience to be there. You know we have a, a wonderful player. It's unfortunate in the beginning it didn't work in well for him because you know how the English football you have to be up and down, up and down, working without the ball with the ball, things like that. Like, it's, the game is now like that for everyone. Any country, is, you have to work in really hard when you have the ball and we don't have the ball. But yeah. uh, with fingers crossed, we come back to, again, into the World Cup, I hope so. Um, just give a little bit lift to the footballers, to believe, you know, we can do it, think we can be in the, in the high level. Look, Colombia. How many Colombia players now, a few years ago, ago never see much of them. But yeah. now it's around the world because they, they've been in the World Cup regular every 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 four years. So that we needed to be competitive. Um, fingers crossed, we'll see more Peruvians around the world. Yeah, let's hope so. And uh, the growth uh, of MLS, el crecimiento de Major League Soccer is also good, right? Alex Callens and yes. uh, Rudias, etc. And Galese, of course, uh, the best keeper in the world. Nobody can tell me otherwise. All right, you spent. Uh, eight years at St. James's Park. What was the best memory at Newcastle, Alberto? What was your favorite? I think when we start to, the, the, the team start to get competitive in the league, we finished in the top four. We, we finished three three years in a row, you know. We finished in the top four to get into the, the spell, to try to get into the Champions League. We played in the Champions League, I believe. We have a great time with Sir Bobby Robson, you know. And unfortunately, he's not here. But he was a great manager, nice person. Even I fell out with him. That's the reason I moved to Aston Villa. But that's right. you know, when the young lad, you are a young player, you want to play football. So that's one of the reasons I had to leave the club. I don't like it to be in the bench all the time. 
So that's the reason I moved to Aston Villa. But uh, I believe with Bobby, it was a great time because he started to build in the club, start to make everybody sure to working hard. We have a great relationship with the fans. So everything, I think we have a great, great time with him. You've played with Diego Maradona in Boca Juniors. You've played with a friend of the show, Alan Shearer, as well. Do you see any similarities there? I mean, obviously, Diego Maradona, God rest his soul, obviously a legend of the game. Alan Shearer, you know, the greatest Premier League striker uh, in terms of numbers at the very least. Do you see any similarities when you when you saw well, both of them? I believe the only Maradona was only one. It's like <laughs> only one Messi, only one Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. Alan will agree. Alan amazing, yeah. Yeah. great goal scorer. Uh, he's a machine. I never see somebody score goals like him. He's a guy, first of all, we still keep in a great relationship. We're still talking together. He's a now he's doing all the time full football focus in, in England. But uh, he, he's the guy, unbelievable how love it, enjoy to score goals. He all the time say after training, no, we, we spent 10 minutes, give me some crosses, I will do some finishing. <laughs> so he was amazing. He was, first of all, another great person, yeah. top, top goal scorer. I won't tell you, you know better probably than me how many <clears throat> times score goals. But he's a wonderful person. I like it. I'm so pleased. I'm so glad to 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 be in, in my in, in my history of the football playing with that great wonderful players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, record 260 goals in the Premier League. Alan Shearer. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you, and I, you assisted a few of them as well. I remember those smart free kicks as well. He, that, yeah, you he's, in my, he's in my bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You can charge him for a few. Are right. you listening, yeah. Alan? He can charge you. A few. Hey, by the way, Newcastle United, we're nearly done here with Alberto Solano. Newcastle United, of course, has new owners. Um, you know, Saudi, Saudi Arabian takeover. They're looking to stay in the Premier League. Eddie Howe is the manager. A lot of good players. Is there anybody you would like to see Newcastle United buy in the summer? The este verano. Is there anybody that you think they well, should? Well, first of all, I, I think, um, you know, everybody get exciting with these new owners. You know, they look like uh, the club will have a more challenge. They will be more competitive in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. But you have to build that. Uh, Eddie House, I like him. He's, he's doing this young manager by the start, even only being two months, three months in the club. He start to get a little bit of results slowly. But that's the time you need it as a manager, as a coach. It's not, not that simple. So the first challenge for Newcastle this season is get away from that relegation zone. So from there, I believe Eddie will have a plenty of time with the owners, with the people, directors, who want to be the next step for Newcastle. So as you know, it won't be simple to attract, you know, world-class players because all of them want to be in the, the high competition, you know, like Champions League, UEFA. So, but I believe, you know, they have a cash to spend to a little bit attractive, some, some great talent. So we hope so, first of all, to, if it's Eddie Howe to be, the next, we, we will carry on with this, you know, the right person to, to make the decisions, to start to build a competitive team. Uh, we fingers crossed because we always, always want to wish to Newcastle the best. I still have a friends, family around there. So we hope so Newcastle getting better and better every season. Yeah, you know, not for I don't want him for Newcastle. I want him for Aston Villa. I am trying so hard, Alberto Solano, for Renato Tapia to come to the Premier League. So I'm doing my own promotions on Twitter. Not Newcastle, though. He better come to Aston Villa for that one. That's my first one. So, you know, put in a good word in for me uh, in, the, in the next few weeks. <laughs> no next problem. Few. <laughs> La última pregunta, Alberto. The last question before we say goodbye. I have to ask you, because CBS Sports, we have the rights to Serie A. Here in Los Estados Unidos, Italian football, obviously very big. Gianluca Lapadula has made quite a statement with the Peruvian national team. Peruvian mother, Italian father, born in Italy. He has really created a, such a passion for Peru and everything that he's done. Can you tell me what, he, what is he like with the team and the kind of energy that he just gives in training and how and how Peruvians, you know, Cueva, Carillo, Pablo Guerrero, Callens, how they received him when he first arrived. Well, he's a, first of all, he's a top professional. 
he's a wonderful kid. He's, he has a Peruvian blow, you know, straight away, just join quick to be sociable, as you probably, you know, we are Peruvians, we like it to be sociable straight away. We know That's shy. right. We like to party and be social. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Whether people like it or not, Norberto. <laughs> yes, of course. But um, that's Gianluca. He give it an extra passion as he go blow Peruvian and Italian. He has experience to, well, he born in Italy. He spent his whole life in Italy. And Italy is similar to Argentinians. They, they, mm. they live in the passion with the football, you know. How much, how much they give you everything. So we very lucky to he joined to to us to have a straightaway impact into the group, to join very well with the group. So he's a wonderful, wonderful professional. He's a wonderful boy, uh, very intelligent. So we please, we please, he sorted out his problem. You know, he been with the club a little bit uh, trouble with an event, but now he yeah. sorted out the problem. We we glad to see him back into the pitch. So, hope so with him, with all the group, you know, everybody get back before we have a uh, two crucial games on, on in two weeks' time, three weeks' time. So, we hope so everybody back fit. This is more important. And um, from there, we 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 still with the with the dream to come back to the World Cup. So, like I've said to you, Gianluca is a, a wonderful person. He's a he's a guy, you know give you everything for the team, like everyone. So we hope so. We hope so still give him more minutes in Benevento and play a little bit more football before I rise to the crucial games. Well, 2018 was a dream for Peruvians making it to the World Cup. We are hoping and dreaming once again that Peru makes it to the World Cup in 2022. Norberto Solano, ha sido un orgullo completamente. De verdad, te digo que esto ha sido un sueño hablar contigo. Te lo agradezco. I thank you so much. Uh, one of our producers, our main producers here, Show Brown. I'm going to be sure to send him a chocolate cake or whatever he likes uh, during the week because this has been an absolute gift. Muchas gracias, Norberto. Thank you so much for being part of the show. No. Eh, gracias a la oportunidad a ti de poderme llegar hacia la gente, hacia ti. Te felicito por tu programa, me has hecho sentir muy bien, como peruano también todos nos sentimos orgullosos, así que que sean muchos años más y que sigas en este show, a tu, a tu show, qué golazo, la verdad, una linda oportunidad, a todos los que te escuchan, thank you everybody, follow you on your show, for the opportunity, it was my pleasure to talk to you, I hope so, we speak to you soon again. There is nobody like Norberto Solano. Muchas gracias. Thank you, everybody. Que golazo pod on Twitter, youtube.com, forward slash que golazo, and anywhere you listen to your pods. We will see you next time. Arriba, Perú. Siempre contigo.